welcome to the 2024 Bill Todd Memorial here at Holiday Bowl. I'm Ryan Many with Jason Temrick. It's been a while since we got together doing this. I, I can't believe how, when was the, the last time that we held this? I can't believe that it's been this much time. It, uh, last one was in 2020. It's been four years since we've had this tournament, so yeah. Uh, COVID kind of got in our way, so unfortunately, but it is, it is great to be back. We're really excited. Uh, We've just finished off our round robin competition to determine our top five qualifiers. We saw a lot of great games today, so looking forward to a really great afternoon. With a time change just last night to add to the fun, no less. We've got a lot of exciting bowling here to look forward to. It's the Bill Todd Memorial here at Holiday Bowl on Rogers TV. tournament 2024 edition so what's happening right now well all morning long we had our round one qualifying and we've narrowed the field down to our top five and this is uh tim and he just started us off with a strike uh so basically what happens now is the top five in the scratch division um we're now going to the step ladder so uh, tim finished fifth and this is jason ives one of our past champions he finished fourth so now they're going to have a head-to-head -head competition and uh, the winner's going to move on and play our number three competitor our number three qualifier with a nice strike of his own. So yeah, this morning they started off with, they bowled six games and uh, so um, Tim over the six games had a, a nice average of 243 and Jason averaged 251 for the six game qualifier leading us up to today's head-to-head -head match. Just off it, the middle a little bit. It's interesting to see at, at this stage of the game, they've been at it for a while. You mentioned they've, they've bowled six games. Uh, obviously, there's the muscle memory because they do this a lot, but throughout the day, is this something that... Well, there's the feeling here. Are they getting, are they getting tired? Uh, are they trying to stay in the flow of things? Well, I think I think at this point uh, the adrenaline kicks in a little bit. Uh, obviously, uh, uh, starting as early as we did this morning with the time change, there's going to be a little bit of yeah. factor setting in. But, <laughs> but uh, these guys bowl a lot of tournaments. I mean, there are some tournaments where they bowl 20 games over two days, so uh, it's it's nothing new for them. And then the excitement of being in the step ladder final and, and being in front of the TV cameras obviously is going to get them get them right back uh, going again. Do you know where our bowlers are from? Uh, both of these competitors are from Lethbridge. They both bowl here out of Holiday Bowl. Um, just looking at our top five, uh, four, of the, four of them are from Lethbridge and we have one from Medicine Hat. Um, and she's going to be competing in the final match. Ah, Tim gets a solid double. Has the format, this is uh, 2024 edition. It's been uh, four years now as the Bill Todd Memorial and we're excited to be here on Rogers TV. Has the format changed at all at, at this stage of the, of the, of the tournament? No, it's been fairly consistent. Um, we've always had both a scratch and a handicap division um, and then the scratch goes into the step ladder finale to determine the, the grand champion. Um, we haven't really changed much over the years. And picks up the difficult spare. It's going to give him 
63 in the second with this pair in the third. As Jason goes up there. Now, Jason is a past champion of ours, like I mentioned. Um, he won it, actually, the very inaugural one way back in 2017. Yeah. Good, good Have it up, Jason. Chop off a little, little bit of a break. He hit the head pin a little solid. That could have been a head pin as well. So. to do their work. <laughs> yeah. That boy. Right, there's All some right, master work right there. Just clears the deck. Picks up 15. We have some work going on behind the scenes. Uh, our community coach What's his official title for today's match? Uh, that would be Rick Westby. He is what you know as a judge of play. So he comes out and he volunteers his time and he, he basically um, watches over the tournament. If there's any uh, oh, unfortunate head pin there, uh, if there's any uh, situations arise where there's uh, concerns with with the scoring or if uh, pins were knocked down and the, the computer didn't count it or whatever, uh, he's the one who makes the call on what the official score would be. Uh, he's also watching over our final today and he's uh, making sure the uh, score uh, it's scoring properly because they're doing the uh, the one two two format. Um, so uh, we want to give a shout out to Rick. Thank you for him volunteering his time and, and doing that for us today. Yeah, and good news, Rick. AI has not replaced you yet. <laughs> not yet. <laughs> viewers who don't frequent a, a bowling alley regularly where is this match right now in the in the grand scheme of things where um, you know scoring of, of where they'd like to be well Tim's off to a very solid start he's got uh, all black marks for the first three frames uh, we'll see what he does here and then he got another strike on top of that spare so that's going to give him a 30 count in the third so he's going to have 93 after three and a strike coming home in the, or in the, or in the fourth so he's sitting in a really good position. Uh, Jason's had a, a rougher start out of the gate, uh, but like they say, there's in bowling, there's nothing up there that uh, four in a row won't fix. Um, very, very difficult to do. Very difficult to do. You have to, you have to come in at uh, just the right angle with, uh, with a lot of spin on the ball. It's a little bit tougher now with strings. Back in the days of free fall, it was a little bit easier to, to spare these, but uh, it's pretty tough now. So you're telling me monkeys don't replace the pins anymore either? No, we stopped doing that quite a while ago. <laughs> I said corrected. That was only on the Flintstones, wasn't it? I think so. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so with that head pin, Tim's got an open frame, so he's sitting at 120 points after five frames. Um, Jason's sitting at 64 after four, so a couple of strikes here, and he's right back in this match. Nice solid pocket hit for Jason. 
Jason. Do you think any of our viewers don't know the rules of bowling? Like what happens when a strike gets thrown? How, how, what, how does that change the scoring for the next three? So essentially what happens is, is if you throw a strike, then uh, whatever you count on the next two balls you throw is going to be added to that strike. So if you throw another strike here, um, that's going to be 15 added to the score plus whatever you throw on the first ball of your next frame. So that's why. So now he's got like three points already on the, on the fifth frame for that strike as well as whatever he's going to throw for his first ball in the next frame. So that's why when you string a bunch together, it doesn't take long to add up a lot of points. Uh, now when you're talking about spares, it's the, the first ball after the spare counts is added to the, the 15 score as opposed to the first two balls. So um, yeah, marks are definitely important for, for adding up your score quickly. And he bounces back with a nice solid strike. We were talking off the air how broadcast technology has changed over the years. Has, has bowling technology changed in the last couple of decades at all? Um, actually, it, it, it has a little bit. Um, the uh, the bowling balls themselves, there's different technologies coming out all the time. Um, you know, they're not just solid rubber balls anymore. Um, they have uh, urethane balls, they have acrylic balls, they have some that are, that are compounds that are part rubber, part acrylic. Um, you know, as far as the, uh, the actual technical aspect of the game goes, you know, um, mostly it's all equipment related changes. But there has been a few advancements in technology, mm -hmm. I guess you could say. points for the sixth frame and uh, I believe that brings him up to 158 in the spare in the seventh. Okay. Yeah, this is a big ball for Jason. The strike here is going to be right back in this match. Very nice. There's the shot. And the turkey. That gets me excited. <laughs> <laughs> Again, for, for anyone not familiar, why do we get that turkey on the screen? Uh, turkey is just an old bowling term for any time you get three strikes in a row, it's called a turkey. Um, I, I honestly don't know what the origins of that are, but uh, we've certainly had a lot of fun with that over the years. <laughs> Maybe it's a variant of winner, winner, chicken dinner. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Now, if you look at the to the sixth frame, Tim sitting at 158. Jay's clawed his way back to 154. There's only four points difference, and Jay's sitting on a double with uh, Tim sitting on a spare in the second. So this becomes a fairly important ball now for Tim. We've talked about this in previous years. Bowling technology has changed for us. We used to bowl together and have to do it all manually on paper. 
Yeah, that was quite a few years ago. Uh, yeah, we uh, had to keep scoring paper in that little old bowling alley we bowled in. Uh, Come on! Was, uh, bowling balls they had there were just a step up from rocks, but uh, <laughs> we, we managed we managed to have a lot of fun with it anyway. Same could be said for the cheesies that they sold. <laughs> Infamous now, yeah. now infamous stale cheesies. <laughs> oh. oh, that's an unfortunate break. Ninth frame is not a not a good frame to get a a bad luck break. You always like to have a mark going into the tenth, but unfortunately, that's a part of the game. Still pretty solid, sitting at 211 after nine. Pre-throw rituals everyone has, and, and uh, Jason stands quite far back before he starts his he does. his walk up. He does. Everybody unique style. Uh, Jason's is fairly unique. He's a step quite a ways back, but he's uh, very very smooth delivery though. Very smooth approach. <laughs> After nine, Tim is sitting at 211. Now, Jason is going to throw first. Now, depending on what he does here, if he marks here, he can shut him out. Tim's got a maximum of 45 points in the 10th, so that would give him a 256 total. Jason sitting at 230, so strike and spare would give him 260 and, and the match. Definitely has to throw the first two strikes to have any kind of a chance here at all. on the head pin, but still a good ball. Probably could have carried, but uh, unfortunately now he's uh, not going to be able to catch Jay. 
which means in our next match it's going to set us up between two former champions. really kicking in for, for Jason right now. <laughs> uh, uh, no, Jason's, uh, he always bowls with a lot of emotion. He bowls, he bowls a few leagues here. And he's uh, always excitable. It's always fun to watch him. He was mentioning off the air as well that he is uh, now bowling without glasses. He said they, was, they started flying everywhere. <laughs> We're getting in the way. As, as we age, you think you'd be adding that to the complement of accessories, but you would think so. I know I couldn't mold on my glasses anymore. <laughs> So what happens now? All right. So now we got two two returning champions here. Uh, Jason Ives, champion of 2017, and Derek Lewicki won our last one, which was in 2020. We had a few year hiatus thanks to COVID and a, a few other circumstances beyond our control. But anyway, uh, so uh, now what happens is uh, Derek finished third, so he gets to choose whether he wants to shoot first or have Jason shoot first, and uh, then they get into their head-to-head. -head. So. I wanted to ask that. What's the strategy you think in going first or second? Well, I guess I guess it all depends. Um, like if you, they they do one frame. Like whoever goes first goes one frame, and they alternate two and two and two. So I guess it depends where some guys like to go first and throw the strike and, and set the tone. Some guys like to see what they're up against and uh, you know like to know what they have to throw in the tenth, whereas other people like to throw in the tenth and put the pressure on. So a uh, little bit of strategy, a little bit of mind games involved with it. So. Starts us off with a strike. mark a little bit there. Yeah, as we saw from the last game, it seems he likes to warm up as the game progresses. <laughs> Keep us on our toes. Absolutely. Keep it interesting. Makes for good television. Just a little bit thin. And speaking of television, thanks for joining us on Rogers TV here for the 2024 Bill Todd Memorial. Yeah, I'd like to thank Rogers for uh, coming back and picking us up again. We're really excited to be working with him again. Got to give a shout out to Ryan Craddock, to our executive producer. He's done a lot for us over the years here. And Kim on our main camera as well. Absolutely. Great volunteering your time here today. Yeah, great to have them here. Thank you. Go, baby, one again. There's also the friends and family support group that's been with the, the athletes throughout the day. Absolutely. Great ball, great. Great. Half and half. A little bit of a break there as well. Pretty thick. We got a chop off, chop off spare ball. So. Punch 
finished the three pin. So, like I was saying earlier, Jason averaged 251 in the qualifying round today, but he had a high game of 342. So, wow. Yeah. Very well. And clears the deck, so he'll be sitting at 30 after two frames. Derek had some sponsors on his shirt. Yeah, Derek uh, has good to see uh, community support. He he actually participates in. They do have a, um, a online pro league for five pin, and he bowls on a team out of uh, Medicine Hat, even though he's a Lethbridge bowler, and uh, so he's wearing his his team's colors today. So. This is mirroring our previous game. Yeah, it's starting out very similar. general bowling question for you. Do you see the bowlers that spend a lot of time with five pin? Is there interest or ability of, of uh, transferring at times to 10 pin? I, we learned on five and I'll always be a five guy. I can never, I can't do 10, I just can't. Well, there are some people that can do both and do both very well. Most of them, like one or the other. They are two completely different games. And we're just going to have to do a quick score correction here. <laughs> but uh, yeah, just getting back to your point there. Uh, you know, ten pin is definitely a, a lot different game than, uh, than five pin and a lot of different strategy. Ten pin, you got to put a lot of curve on the ball and there's a, um, a whole different approach to it. So. Um, but there are ones out there that do enjoy both and do both very well. But the majority of them pick one or the other. And so what's happening right now? Uh, right now we had a ball come back up the gutter and it scored a zero on Jason's score. So we just have to uh, get that corrected so we can continue on with the match. All cleared off, and we're back in business. So are these bowlers active mostly in regular season leagues? Do they travel the province, the country? You know, what, what's their itinerary look like throughout the year? Some of them have very busy itineraries. Uh, for example, Jason here, I know he bowls uh, a couple leagues and he, he bowls most of the tournaments. Um, we've got the big open provincials coming up here on Easter weekend, uh, representing Southern Alberta. Um, Derek as well, as well as Derek, like I said, bowls in the uh, the pro league, uh, so he's off doing that quite a bit. Uh, he bowls one night a week with us here at Fall Bowl as well. So most of these competitors bowl at least one league. It's like anything else; you gotta you gotta put some time in in order to be consistent with the game. The 
consistent time I put in these days is birthday parties and staff gatherings. <laughs> All right, Jason, start them up. Back on track. I still think we need to get you out one night and have some cheesies. <laughs> but they need to be properly aged. <laughs> I'll have, to, I'll, have to put a couple of bags, yeah, I'll have to put a couple of bags aside and maybe next year we'll crack them open on the broadcast. <laughs> 2025 edition. Yeah, baby. There we go. Just picks up his first, first mark of the game. Jason does in the fifth, then we're going to be right back. Just another close match. We'd unofficially like to thank both competitors for keeping it interesting. Yes, absolutely. here on his bear. So what kind of lane prep goes into uh, a tournament like this? You, you don't have mini Zambonis, so. <laughs> No, that would be nice, though. But uh, no, there is quite a bit of uh, preparation that goes into this. Uh, we have special approach cleaner. The, uh, the approaches all have to be scrubbed and involved with the approach cleaner. Uh, the lanes are oiled, so uh, before a tournament, we strip the oil and put fresh oil down, clean the pin decks, uh, make sure all the tensions are proper with the pins. So there is there's a, a little bit of preparation that goes into something like this, for sure. Unfortunately, okay, uh, we'll have to uh, give credit to the uh, competitor that's going in the next uh, the next game because he's actually our maintenance guy here at Holiday Bowl. Oh wow! So. <laughs> He does it all and, and knows it all. Absolutely. Here's the deck. So he's sitting at 100 after six. There, 89 and a strike going into six. This is where 
Jason likes to press the turbo button. Yes. strike in the fifth. That uh, certainly opens up the score right now and makes it a much more competitive match for sure. Uh, he's hitting a 124 after six. Solid strike. This uh, tournament format of throwing two frames at a time, what, what does that serve? Basically, it's just the way that uh, we've done championship formats for a long time. Um, it, uh, instead of going frame frame, you bowl two in a row. Um, now normally, uh, bowlers in a, in a tournament would be doing um, over two lanes in this format. We only do it over one, so you bowl one frame on each lane. And then the other person goes one frame on each lane. Uh, but for uh, for this particular tournament, they do it over one, so it's a little bit different. But uh, but as far as the, the one two two thing goes, that's just the, the way we do our tournaments. <laughs> Again, it's more methodical with that layout. There's <laughs> not much else that you can do after hitting the center on the first. Is there? All you can do is just take take them all and, and count as many points as you can. Forget about it. Move on to the next frame. With that said, with anyone who's unfamiliar, this the center pin is actually worth the most, and and the other pins have different. That, that's it. correct. The, the, the head pin is worth five points. Um, the, the two pins um, on each side of it are worth three points, and then the corner pins are worth two points for a total of 15. Um, so that's why in, in five pin bowling, the perfect game is 450 as opposed to 310 pin. Take your time. Technique to this one. He's aiming to the right of the center pin. Yeah, yeah. You'd want to, you'd want to hit it on the uh, the opposite side to where the corner pin is, and hope that the head pin carries and knocks that down. Great. So he's going to sit at 125 after eight. Take a moment and congratulate uh, the winners from this morning on the handicap side. So, um, winning the men's division was Bob Sanderson. Took himself home $300. Uh, he's from Lethbridge as well. And uh, on the ladies' side, we have Talena Eklund of Medicine Hat. She also took home $300. So, congratulations to them. Interesting, I guess, the psychology at this point of the tournament. It's not uh, comparing or or doing as well as you did earlier. It's just truly competing against yourself and and the other competitor in this in this game. 
Yeah, bowling is is a game that uh, really you're only you're mostly competing against yourself. Um, it, 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 every at some point in every tournament, everybody struggles a little bit, and it kind of gets in your head a little bit. You just have to battle through. It. Um, you're gonna you're gonna get good breaks. You're gonna get bad breaks. You can't let that get to you. You just have to fight through it. And, and it's, you know, uh, most of the most of the bowlers understand that. They just they just keep plugging away and, and stay positive. It's going to be very difficult. Um, he's if he strikes out, he's got uh, a maximum of 90 points up there, which would, would give him a maximum of 215. Derek is sitting at 197, so whatever he counts on is spare plus the 10th frame. So uh, Jason's pretty much got a strikeout and then hope for a little help. But but it is doable. The math is still there, and of course he got the strike in the ninth, so anything's possible. so well in math class when we went to school together. <laughs> no, I can calculate bowling scores, that's about <laughs> it. <laughs> that's mostly comes from my ears when I was competing, trying to calculate what I needed to catch up to the leaders because I was never on the top. <laughs> oh, that's tough. So 165 is his maximum, so unfortunately this will be the, uh, the end of the line for Jason. Derek will be advancing. No, this uh, this match is pretty much done. So whatever Derek does here is, is all academic. But still, you want to finish strong and uh, stay focused and get ready for your next match. So he's going to finish with a 210. So he'll be advancing on to, to play Gino Mangoni, who is uh, also our maintenance guy here at the Lady Boy. So do you ever catch him <laughs> sleeping on the lanes? <laughs> no, no uh, competitive advantage? No. You must know the ins and outs of these particular lanes. <laughs> well, there's... Not really a lot of difference, but if people really like to bug him about that. Being a maintenance guy, they always say that he, he, he's got the advantage, but uh, I don't know if he'll argue otherwise. Split. This is harder to clean up, but it is possible, isn't it? It is. It is possible. Yeah, you got to you got to hit the three pin on the on the inside of it, just like that. He had the right idea, but uh, it is a difficult spot. Yeah, clears all the wood. Very nice. 
2024 Bill Todd Memorial here at Holiday Bowl. I'm Ryan with Jason and I would be remiss if I didn't draw attention to your Rat Pack <laughs> shirt. We, we went all out today. I, I did. I changed it up. I didn't wear a tie this year. I figured I'd go with more of a bowling theme. Me being the old guy that I am, I'm a big fan of the Rat Pack, so it all seemed appropriate. I love it. And I've had a few offers uh, on my jacket behind the scenes here uh, before we started the broadcast. So it I is, guess it is uh, looking pretty, pretty sharp there. Uh, I guess the I guess we did well this year. Yeah, we did. We did. <laughs> Both of us decided to change it up a little bit. <laughs> so what what's Rick discussing with uh, with Gino right now? I think Gino forgot that it's a one two two format. Right. He's gonna go up and throw. Yeah. So. We'll we'll go easy on him. This is his television debut, so. just joined us here with the uh, 2024 Bill Todd Memorial. Where are we right now? What, what are the stakes in this game? So we're down now to our, our final three competitors. Um, we, we started off at the top five, we the step ladder. We had our first two matches. Um, so the winner of this is going to go on to, uh, to play Marissa. She was our top qualifier for the championship. So, um, yeah, a lot at stake here. Uh, winner, winner, like I said, winner of this goes on to compete for the, uh, the overall crown. That's, uh, that's an oopsie. All right, we have Gino. say the the shine on the alley is impressive <laughs> and it, there it is. There it's uh, there we go. you, you don't find that everywhere i guess it's bowling alleys can be like golf courses there's good ones and bad ones well, most most of the bowling alleys now there's not too many uh, those old wooden bumpy surfaces that we we grew up bowling on all right that so. that explains a lot <laughs> That's where you had to factor in not only the curvature of, of the lane, but also of the earth to so absolutely <laughs> <laughs> hope and pray that your ball would go where you wanted it to. I think in the, uh, the bowling alley that we bowled in, it was in that old Quonset, and I think there was probably some rain damage too, so the lanes were a little <laughs> bit warped. At least that's my excuse. Small town bowling, nothing like it. <laughs> Watch that three again. Yes. It's going to give him a 30 after two. Gina also a 30 after two. So another combination that can be cleaned up. Hitting to the right of the pipe. Or the left. Yeah, in this case, it'd be a little bit easier on the left because you want to shoot the sure. over towards the right, the right corner pin. But I never try to make things easy for myself. <laughs> Struggled there in the third, but. I 
Coming off a uh, spare, I believe. Yeah. yeah so we got so 30 counts uh, in the third, so he's got 60 out at three, striking four. <laughs> Start out on the floor and, and their throws. Gino's got his own style, hey? He does. Yeah. But you know, everybody, everybody's got their own unique way, and uh, you know, they've got to find out what works for them, what they're comfortable with. There is a kind of a textbook method that they, they, they like to teach the young kids on how to do it, but uh, you know, over time, everyone develops their own way, and, and you got to be comfortable out there, so. 2024, what does bowling look like for a, a young boy? There's still leagues like uh, back back in our time. Yep, absolutely, there's still youth programs. Um, our YBC program um, runs Sunday afternoons. Uh, you start at age three and a half and run right up to age 18. Three and a half. Three and a half. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, we start them off. They call them our Dino kids. They bowl two games, and it's it's uh, quite adorable to come out and watch them. <laughs> they get pretty excited, even if they just hit one pin. <laughs> so, but uh, no, it's it, I mean it's a great program because uh, you know like it's uh, definitely different than your nice nice big strike for Derek here. It's a lot a uh, lot uh, different than your traditional sports like your hockey and everything like that, basketball. But the nice thing about bowling is a it's affordable. B, every kid is guaranteed to bowl their, their three games every week. Nobody's going to be sitting on the bench, and there's there's coaching for everybody. And it's it's just a, it's a great program. I know I started up when, it, when I was uh, five years old, and some of my my best friends are are ones that I met when I was in that program. So uh, it's it's I'd highly recommend it to anybody. the scoreboard you guys are going at it yeah they started to start it off a little slow but now they're now they're throwing some marks i think that's the bat phone <laughs> where the prime minister is going to congratulate them on yeah on the uh the last couple of frames i think so up the sparrows. Sparing it up with uh, just a couple frames left. What's your what's your take on on uh, eight, nine, and ten? Well, this this is a tight match. Uh, they're both on a lot of marks. Uh, anything can happen here. This this is an important ball for Derek because Gino's sitting on a double and uh, Derek's sitting on a spare. But uh, still, lots lots of pins left out there. And he nailed it. Uh, Specialty, I'd say. In this match, anyway. Just on the 
pipe in here a little bit, so he's going to open the knife, which is uh, definitely going to leave the door open here for Derek. Alright, so that gives him 2.34 after 9. Strike of the eighth, there's a whole bunch of different ways this can play out. this up, give him 30 in the ninth, so a 223 with a potential 253 if he caps it off with a strike. So that would be his mark, yeah. so he gets the hat off. That's going to give him a 248. So, in a scenario like that, Gino has to clear the deck. He doesn't necessarily have to mark, but if he takes all the pins, that's 15. That would give him a 249. Yeah. That should do it. So, just remove all the doubt. Just go up and throw his hurt, and then it doesn't really matter. So, Gino will be advancing to the final. Orthodox, but it works for him, so whatever. Wound up with a 269, and he's advancing to the final. Exciting game here on the 2024 Bill Todd Memorial. Absolutely, it's been uh, very exciting. Every match so far has come down to the last frame. Could have gone either way, so uh, this one's setting up to be a really good match. These were the one-two qualifiers in the round robin, so um, yeah, they both of them threw really well throughout the tournament. Uh, Larissa Long is from Medicine Hat. Um, she saw, averaged a solid 266 in the qualifier this morning, so she's going to be a really tough competitor for Gino. It's going to be a great match. And no pausing for ceremony, we're right back into it, right off the bat. No, Gino's not messing around, he's yeah. just getting right back at her.
you know, do you have to work after this? So what was Larissa just checking out on the on the alley here? Well, she's probably just making sure, like checking the slide. Um, some approaches uh, they can get a little bit slippery, a little bit wear, or maybe if there's something sticky on the lane, um, or maybe it could be as simple as uh, she stepped on something on her shoe going up there. So you just want to take a practice slide and make sure that uh, you're sliding okay before you throw your first ball. Very nice, exciting start for this. Yeah, both come out, throw big strikes. Big match. It did give me a, a little bit of an idea, though. Could you imagine combining bowling with curling? <laughs> I don't know how it would work, but I bet it would be fun. It would be very interesting. Starts off with a double. So, are you suggesting throwing curling rocks at the pins, or are you suggesting trying to roll a bowling ball down a curling ring? I don't know, <laughs> but I think we should take a look at that. We might have to explore this. See if there would be a slip for your foot back to the in there somewhere. <laughs> I don't know if you'd still use the phrase hurry hard or something completely different. <laughs> I think you'd have to come up with some new dialogue. When he's not bowling and, and doing maintenance, do you find Gino works better under pressure? Hey, one good shot. There you go. <laughs> You don't have to answer that for HR reasons. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I don't. I don't think I can. Answer that. Hey, stay aggressive. Hey, trust me. Throw that shot. Yeah, she threw a really solid uh, round robin. She actually had a couple of 300. She had a 300 and a 336 in there this morning. I'm going to try to tag pin. All sticks. Build Todd Memorial. Have there been any, any real surprises in the in the last couple of matches of the day that you recall? Um, well, I don't know if there's been a lot of surprises. Um, all the competitors have been really good. There's been some really big games and some really exciting hey, matches right, that have been thrown. Um, Start back up. But I can't think of anything that uh, stands out off the top of my head that that would, that would classify as a surprise. As you said, both these bowlers yeah, showed ready, earlier in the day that like they were meant to be here at, at this stage of the yeah, game. No, absolutely. They, they both had a really good uh, qualifying tournament. Both of them uh, are season tournament bowlers and have been bowling a long time. But, um, you know, this, this is a, a well, well earned final match up to here this afternoon.
Thanks. <laughs> Just trying to make things exciting here on Rogers TV. Uh, yeah, no, for our TV viewers, that was not slow motion. That is actually the <laughs> pin falling. He, he punches that dreaded egg bin. Happens to everybody. It does. It's part of the game, unfortunately. It's not much you can do about it. Sitting at 117 hey, after five. At the halfway point. They're at the halfway point, and once again, we have got a match. It's one thing we can say about this this year's installment. We have not had a runaway. It's been close the whole way. Same sweet shot, like you do. Ah. A little bit. of uh, supportive comments from uh, the uh, the viewers here at Holiday Bowl are being picked up by these mics, but <laughs> some, some interesting I, comments I and, and nicknames. I'm, I'm hoping it doesn't pick up everything. <laughs> fun though to be in amongst the, the audience and getting their reaction in real time as well. That's uh, the biggest piece that's missing. I've tried VR bowling for the first time earlier this year and it's uh, bowling in a void. <laughs> <laughs> You're all by yourself. It's kind of like going to a movie by yourself. It can be fun and weird. Yeah, a little bit different for sure. I mean, as in, as in there's no one else in the movie theater <laughs> and you're there by yourself. <laughs> yeah, that would be a little bit weird. Noticed a lot of squeak in Larissa's shoes. I guess uh, everyone has their own custom wear. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, especially, uh, especially these tournament bowlers. Of course, they're going to have their own shoes because uh, those, those rentals aren't very comfortable. Especially if you're doing like a ten-game tournament. Mm. I don't think you'd want to have your feet in those for that long. Turkeys this game. Yeah, we haven't seen that yet this game. Still lots of time. Thank you. 
it's later in the day. Did you notice uh, an effect springing ahead with the time change last night? <laughs> Have on anyone today? Well, it affected me. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> but um, no, I mean, as far as, far as the bowlers go, they've, they, they, I haven't noticed anything as far as fatigue goes. So driving and bowling aren't the same. Got to be careful on the roads anytime after an, a time change. <laughs> it's a fact. I was uh, a little worried that all my staff wasn't going to show up today, but uh, aside from that, everything, everything's been all good. It's like changing technology. We've been talking about everyone's clocks change now on their own. You don't have to worry exactly. about the VCR anymore. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe your stove, that's about it. <laughs> set a battery alarm clock up just in case that I'm still pretty old school. Old habits. Yeah. <laughs> open frame though if she strikes out for 9 and 10 that's still an additional 90 points so I mean, there's still a solid 250 game out there for her. Gino actually bowls three leagues here. Wow. Yeah, Gino, here you go. One so more. Two mixed leagues and one senior league. <coughs> and then in the spare time, he's here doing maintenance. Spare time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you caught the pun. certainly open the door for Lewis to get right back in this year with a couple of marks. Hey, Sassy McGee, let's go, eh, girl? Throw that good ball. That's a big strike that uh, puts her right back into this match. One more time, just like that, eh? Mm -hmm. Yeah, just next ball to come. 
one's very important because on that uh, on that strike count now. If she gets a mark here, she can put a little bit of pressure on Gino. So the tables have turned now. How's it looking for Gino? Now the pressure is going to be all on Gino. Yeah. This is rare, but throws a, a bit of fun. <laughs> <laughs> adds adds to the, the drama. One, one get it, get it to go in yeah. the in the <laughs> tenth frame for, for Larissa. It's not the monkeys doing the macarena. <laughs> That, uh, what a finish. Like I said, uh, it's a solid 257, so now uh, that forces Gino to, to get this straight here. And, uh, fortunately now, the maximum can get is 30 points for a 246, so that is going to be our champion for this season. Strong finish by everyone, but man, what a final frame. Yeah. yeah. As he throws that one down. So a 226, and that's that's all she wrote this year. Larissa takes home the championship. Just as exciting as the, the the athletes at work with our tournament here today, the Bill Todd Memorial. It's handing out the awards for our uh, top five here and starting things off. A uh, hundred dollars recipient, Tim Garrett's Tim. Did the was, was the time change a factor at all today, or or did you sleep right through it? Time change was not a factor. I made sure I set my clock an hour early just to make sure. So I was good. Fantastic. Well, congrats again on your fifth uh, placement here today, the Bill Todd Memorial. Thank you. Thank you very much.
and congratulating Jason Ives, our fourth place finisher here today. Jason, how did you feel? You went today, you, you've been here before, you've been at the, at the top of the podium today, or, or in previous years, how did today go? Went pretty good today. I struggled in the second game there. I'm nervous, I think nervous got to me. You had, uh, we, we watched uh, a couple of your games as uh, some of the final matches. You had this uh, interesting technique. You started slow and then bang, you really hit it off uh, later into the game. Yeah, I wish I would uh, start a little sooner in games and waiting until later to come back all the time. Well, you made it interesting for us. Fourth place finisher, $150. Congratulations. All right, thank you. And we're chatting with our third place finisher here today, Derek Lewicki. This was a, an exciting day for you. We really had a, a great time watching you in, in your, your matches here. You, uh, this, this isn't your uh, only tournament that, uh, that you've been in this year. You're, you're active throughout the, the bowling community, aren't you? Correct, yeah. We actually just finished a tournament here last weekend in Settler and didn't bowl as well as I wanted to, but same as today. You're, you're a busy guy. What, what uh, technique brings you this far into a tournament to finish in third place? Just lots of practice, concentration, and just finish, finish every shot. Well, congrats on third place. And Derek, that, uh, all that practice paid off. $200 in, in today's third place finisher. Thank you very much. Chatting with our second place finisher here today at the Bill Todd Memorial, Gino Mangoni. Gino, you did amazing today. You, you really had us uh, entertained in, in the last couple of uh, rounds here at uh, Holiday Bowl. You have a, a, a special throw. Some people were razzing or supporting you from the, from the peanut gallery. I, c I couldn't little, decide little which it was. A little bit of everything. A little bit of everything. Uh, is that something you've developed over time, or did, is, it, is it just all natural? It's all natural. <laughs> they're, they're after me all the time. Well, plus I do the maintenance here, so that's an issue for them. Fantastic. I was asking uh, Jason, uh, we were, we were uh, surmising, or I was, uh, you know, do you ever sleep overnight? Do you, do you ever uh, get some time in on the lanes when no one else is around, since you're the, the fix-it guy as well? Well, you know what? I'd love to try and bowl a few extra games, but uh, the bosses won't let me. <laughs> I'm here to work. The hard work did pay off. Uh, Gino, yeah. congrats. Second place finisher. It was a, a really great match right up to the very end. And congrats on your $250 winnings. Well, thank you. Yeah, it was a great day. Good day. Congratulations. Thank you. We're standing here with this year's 2024 Bill Todd Memorial Champion, Larissa Long. She's the first lady to win this championship, as well as the first person not from Lethbridge to win this championship. <laughs> so just before we uh, to get to the presentation here, I just want to uh, just uh, kind of talk a little bit about uh, the namesake of this tournament, uh, Bill Todd. Uh, he was certainly somebody that was very special to all of us. Uh, he was a big part of the bowling community. Uh, he was a man that um, went to nationals. He threw the perfect game. I mean, there's pretty much he didn't accomplish in the sport. Uh, he was a coach. Um, he loved working with the kids, especially his daughter, Haley, who we are privileged to have with us here today. I know this is very uh, difficult for her, but we really appreciate her being here because uh, believe me, I've, I had the pl pl uh, pleasure of being friends with Bill for a long time and Haley was his entire world. So we're very honored for her to be here today. So with that being said, uh, we want to congratulate Larissa. So um, congratulations, Larissa. So uh, maybe just uh, tell us a little bit about uh, how you felt and what you were thinking out there. I was extremely nervous the entire time, but um, definitely confident in what I was doing. I was bowling well all day, um, so I just kind of went into it thinking just to keep doing what I was doing and that I was going to make myself proud. Well, congratulations. You do, did very well. Uh, certainly an entertaining uh, afternoon for all of us. So uh, you win $400, so we'll get uh, Haley to, to present you with, uh, with that. <laughs> and now the presentation of the Bill Todd Memorial trophy. So once again, congratulations. congratulations. Yeah. All right. Thank you very much.